Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the replacement Quickie RV Electric Steps here on our 2004 Alpha Leisure SIA Motorhome. If you're having issues with your electric steps on your motorhome or your trailer, then you're going to want to get the replacement Quickie Steps, depending on what series you have. That way, every time you open or close your door, your steps extend or retract as needed. So these steps will come with a uh, couple of different uh, models, depending on the width that you have or the entry height that you have on your motorhome. Uh, we have a whole chart listed on every one of our product pages with these steps that's going to list out that entry height and that width so that may, you can make sure that you get the correct size brackets. Um, overall these steps are pretty simple to install. There is going to be a wiring harness which with this specific model is not going to come with the pigtail that will go on your motorhome side just because these are replacements. If you needed to completely replace your entire assembly you'd want to make sure that you pick the one that says complete assembly with it. And that's going to give you that four pole pigtail. It's going to give you your door switch, which you can see on our door here and on the inside so that every time we open and close our door, our steps know what direction that they need to travel. And then it's also going to come with your motor and your control box. If you look at our step, you can see that there's a nice thick non-slip tread on here so that you don't end up slipping on here, especially you look at the back side of it where it's actually just the powder coated metal. If it was raining or maybe you had some ice buildup, you could slip on that, whereas the nice no slip tread right there is gonna help keep you nice and planted on your steps. There also is a safety light on the bottom, which is a little hard to see in the daylight, but that'll also help you out at night. That way you can easily see exactly where your step is along with the reflective strip right here, which is also gonna show up in the dark a whole lot easier. And this step is rated for 300 pounds. So, you know, when you step up on it, it's going to be nice and sturdy. Installation difficulty is going to vary depending on how your setup already is. Our old one had quite a bit of rust build up on it. It really wasn't wanting to cooperate much. Um, getting it off and then putting the new one on really isn't that hard if it wasn't for the rust. So you may want to put some gloves on, definitely put some uh, eye protection on because as you're getting under these, there's a whole lot of dirt and stuff that can fall down on you and get in your face. Um, other than that, hookups very simple. I do recommend getting the complete assembly every time, just replacing all of it, especially the magnetic door switch, because if you don't, you could have an issue with that or it just doesn't link up because certain steps are a open normally or a normally closed system and then your steps will kind of go reverse of how they should just because the correct magnetic kit isn't with it. So like I said, not too bad other than that, but let me show you how I did it. So when you're looking at replacing your electric step, the easiest way to determine what the correct replacement's gonna be is to look under here and on the actual bracket for your step, it's gonna have a sticker on there, whether it's Quickie or Lippert, whatever brand it is, and it's gonna have a bunch of codes on that. And we can take those serial numbers and cross-reference them with the sheet from Quickie and then figure out the exact replacement for that specific model. Now, if that sticker's too worn away or maybe there's some grease or something on it to where you can't clean it off and actually look at it, then we're gonna have to take some measurements. So the first measurement that you're gonna wanna get is your bracket width. So that's gonna be from the inside. If you look at it, kind of around here, here is our mounting bracket from our motorhome itself. We wanna make sure that we get from uh, this side over to our other side because that's the space we're going to have to actually fit in our step. And then from there we're going to measure from the ground while we're level up to that bracket again. So in this instance it's about 20 inches and for our width it's going to be sitting right around 23 and 3 quarter inches. So once we have those measurements we do have a chart on each of these pages which kind of lists where exactly that's gonna fit and which specific model number is gonna fit within that. All right, so now to begin our installation, we're gonna have to first remove our old step. Uh, kind of a bit of mess of the wiring down here. I mean, as you can see, the step is already stuck out and it won't close up at all. Could have something to do with some of the wiring just being completely broken off and loose. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just start cleaning all this up and seeing exactly what we have going on down here. So after taking off some of our protective casing, I can see here's his door switch. So what that does is it, as your door opens, it's gonna open up that step, and as you close the door, it's gonna close the step. And clearly not working because it is completely corroded off and broken out of that butt connector there. So there's no power running to it. 
So it's super important that you use a heat shrink butt connector because these steps are gonna be outside and where they're located, you're just gonna have a whole lot of water and snow or anything else on the road running up and splashing up against this and causing some issues. So using just a regular butt connector and some electrical tape really isn't gonna cut it. Uh, but from there, we also have our connector for our controller. We can just pop the tabs off and unplug it. Our purple wire right here is going to be for our lights. And it looks like it was probably just taped together without a connector. So we're just going to pull those apart and save that wire. I'll probably have to strip that back a little bit. If you notice that your wiring is getting all brittle, it's not good anymore. You need to cut it back and try and get to some fresher wire. So like I said, that's why it's important to always use a heat shrink butt connector on stuff that's gonna be sitting outside. Go ahead and cut that off too. And just let that hang. And then our green wire here is a ground. I'm assuming it's running up into our battery for the controller. We can just go ahead and cut that off here. Let's leave it a little bit extra and hook that up later. But all we have left is our ground screw for our door switch. We'll go ahead and try and pull that out. Nah. That screw's pretty much busted off, so we're going to go ahead and just cut it. And then we can start removing the bolts and to unmount our step from our chassis here. All right, got my last nut loose. I'm gonna go ahead and lower this down. As you can see, just like I was saying, all kinds of road grime and stuff just building up on top of here. So it's super important that you make sure all your wiring connections are fully secured with a heat shrink butt connector. That way you don't have any of this stuff ruining your wiring. So one thing to do before we go ahead and set our new steps up is to double check our measurement for our bolt holes. I don't wanna to have to get under there and try and hold that up and fight putting it in place and then realizing the bolt holes don't actually match up. So if we look, length width wise, we got 22 inches in front to back. We got six and a half. If we take that over to our new steps, 22 across and six and a half front to back. So we know this is gonna line up perfectly. We don't have to worry about it cutting in new holes or rigging anything extra but this one's going to be just slightly different than our old one because it looks like they kind of did a little bit of rigging up after the fact maybe to make things work like our light for our step it's actually running over to our controller and is being powered by our controller whereas on our old one it's got a separate wire running for power so i'll probably end up capping that old power line off and then we're just going to hook in our four pole connector i'll have to cut off this little connector for our purple wire, which is also for our light. And then I'll just connect that up to our old one. And then our ground, I'm going to run into the frame itself. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna use a floor jack to kind of hold this up into place, just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, if you don't have that, obviously you could just get under there, hold it up yourself and kind of bolt it on. But with how close the, uh, roof is under here. I can't get the two front bolts out. So I think this is pretty much gonna hold it pretty well because those bolts are still sitting in there. I'm gonna try and line it right up and just use my jack to lift it up into place. And then I can get under there and tighten up the nuts on it. to get under there just to kind of control this. All right, raise that jack just a bit more. All right, now that we got that in, we can go ahead and start tightening up our nuts. 
Uh, one thing with these steps is that they do not come with any hardware. So if you don't want to have to reuse your hardware, you will have to go and get some new ones. But I prefer to just reuse what we already had. We all know it's going to fit. And it's not too rusted up. There shouldn't be any issues. Oh, we can go ahead. Let's get a couple of these started and then we can tighten these up e evenly so that we don't get this going on crooked. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time trying to get my nuts on especially on this front run up here just because there's quite a bit of stuff in the way and with the step actually being retracted right now it's also blocking me from really getting anything in there so what i've done so far is just kind of tighten up these back ones and i've got this front one over here in and it's good to go i just don't have these all fully tightened down we're going to go ahead and hook up our wiring and then we'll extend the step that'll give us plenty of space we can easily tighten all those down so we'll go ahead and get our jack out of the way because this is now being supported by the three nuts that are holding it. So this little wire coming off of our connector on our uh, motorhome side was hooked up and also kind of spliced in with the light, but that is actually supposed to be for our door closer switch. That's that little magnet that's going to sit up when you open or close the door. It'll tell the step to open or close depending on how you have it. Um, the wiring is pretty worn out on here, so I went ahead and I cut this down I, like I said I don't want to use any regular crimp on butt connectors I want to make sure I'm using heat shrink so we'll go ahead and trim that back and get this ready to go I'm just gonna crimp on some excess wire we had laying around to run this back over to that wiring harness I'm also gonna zip tie it up onto our frame here just to keep it out of the way go ahead and cut it right up there and we'll use another heat shrink I'm going to come back with a, another ring terminal and self-tapper. I'm going to shoot it into the frame here for our ground as well. But we can hold off on that for right now. We're going to go ahead and hook up our light switch. And like I said, ours came with a connector on the new step. Our old one doesn't have that. So we will have to just cut this connector off and just splice them together. down a bit so there's a ground wire right here running up to our battery our ground wire on our new step is going to come with a ring terminal um, you can put it up on that or if you had that uh, battery ground already there you can go ahead and do that but I'm gonna go ahead and just cap that off and I'm gonna do this to the chassis just to make sure we don't have any issues going down the road but with how rusted up this frame is I think it's best to just kind of run it over here into something else that might be a little bit less rusty uh, only problem with that is a lot of this frame is a whole lot thicker so you may run into some issues like that uh, if you can try and clean off some of this rust if you have it on your motor home and with a wire brush or something like that and then you can shoot that self tamper through uh, but you just want to make sure that you're getting a good ground connection without a good ground your steps are not going to work properly or they'll work in opposite order uh, they've seen steps do a lot of crazy things just because the ground's bad so you want to make sure you get a really good connection with that all right so i've gone ahead and kind of cleaned up a little bit of that rust we're just going to go ahead and shoot this in now yep i'm gonna get that on there better 
go. Actually, move that up, keep that wire out of the way. Zip tie all that up out of here once we shrink down our butt connectors, but we can go ahead and hook on our little four pole. Display right here. And as you can see with me getting power to it, the step's already working. So now that I had that four pole hooked up, I've got power and it pushed the step out because we have our door open. So it gave me enough room. I can get my hands in there and get that final nut on and then we can start tightening all this down. All right, so I'm gonna put on a new ring terminal here. We'll crimp that down. I've also gone ahead and kind of sanded down the rust on this side as well. And we'll use another self-tapper to get our door switch grounded to the frame here. And now with our door switch grounded, we have our door closed and you can see that the step fully came up. So I'm gonna open that door back up. We'll have our step come out and then I'm gonna tuck all my wiring up. I'm gonna zip tie it up to this frame just to keep it out of the way. I don't wanna take any chances that it actually catching on the hinges as we go. And I can protect it a little bit more. And we'll also go ahead and shrink down all of our heat shrink butt connectors using our heat gun. That way we make sure all of our connections are secure and waterproof. So we had everything hooked up and our stairs are just not functioning properly. So it leads me to believe that the door switch itself is the issue. Uh, that tends to be the most common problem that we have with these. So we're gonna go ahead and test it. To do that, I unhooked my four pole connector and we're gonna put our uh, voltmeter into our door switch wire and then our positive end of our voltmeter into the red wire terminal. So with the door closed, uh, we should be reading 12 volts and we're not getting anywhere near that. So we know that the door switch itself is the issue. So we're gonna have to pull that off and replace it. Um, that's why it's usually a good idea whenever you're replacing these steps, just get the complete assembly. This one does not come with the door switch because um, it's not the complete assembly. Um, you can buy these steps as just the step uh, sometimes with the control module or the motor and all that or just separately uh, but like I said the complete assembly just comes with everything you don't have to worry about anything being an issue it's also going to come with another four pole harness if that was an issue on your rig so instead we're going to have to go ahead and get another switch and pull this one out and replace it so I've got my new magnet I've already gone ahead and crimped on a ring terminal and just hooked it up and tested it just to make sure that everything's working properly that there's no other issues with any of our wiring and we had no issues, step went in and out as our door opened and closed with our magnet. So I know for sure this is good to go. So I'm just gonna trace this back through the opening that we already had. This is originally, it looks like they kind of just drilled into here and passed it through the gasket. I'm just gonna do the same thing. If I need to, I may just have to take that ring terminal off and just crimp on a new one but we might be able to just sneak it through there. There is an adhesive backing on here. So I'm gonna take that strip off and we'll stick it right on. And I'm gonna also reinsert those screws that were in our previous one. So now we're gonna go ahead and repeat that process we first did when we installed our new step with our old uh, magnetic door switch and we're just going to run some more wire from our new switch back over to our four pole harness once again we're going to use heat shrink bud connectors keep our wirings nice and protected that back on and we can put on our ground all right now that we got our wiring hooked back up I'm gonna go ahead back up top and we'll hook on our other magnet make sure this is all working and then all we got to do is just shrink up those butt connectors and zip tie it back in place 
So here's the door side of my magnetic switch. If I get it close up to it, you can see that it's functioning properly. It's closing the step because it thinks that the door is closed. And as I pull it away, our step opens back up. So we know this is good. Now, one other thing that concerns me is just there is about a finger's width of space between the magnetic uh, pieces here just because of how the door sits because they have it attached to their uh, screen door. So I'm going to put a finger here just to kind of simulate that, make sure that if my door closes, it's still going to fit. All right, so even with that amount of space, we're still good to go. Uh, if you wanted to test that out yourself before installing it, just to make sure that you have it close enough, because if you don't have it close enough, these two magnets aren't going to be able to communicate with each other and properly operate the door. But since we're all good to go, I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off of my adhesive here. We'll stick it back where it was. I'll try and line it up with the screw holes that we already had. And we'll just reuse those screws from our previous one to ensure it stays in place. Now while you're doing this, you really want to be careful. This is just plastic on here, so you don't want to drill too hard. You do, and you'll break it right off. All right, now that we got the magnet secured, we'll go ahead and close our door. As you can see, our step's popping right in. If I open it up, our step comes right out. Well, I think about does it for today's installation of the replacement Quickie RV electric steps here on our 2004 Alpha Leisure SIA motorhome. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.